Hello, welcome to another Sudoku issue of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to talk a bit about uh, speed solving. And uh, we're going to do this by reference to the super fiendish puzzle that appeared in today's times, where um, there's a particular point in this puzzle where the solver, I think, is faced with a choice. They can try and find um, a logical way through, um, and when we get to this point, I will talk through how to find that. Or they can do what's described in you know, various blogs and blogs on the subject as um, guess, in effect. Uh, sometimes uh, the word bifurcate is used as a sort of euphemism for guess, but it amounts to the same thing. Um, often when you get to a particularly difficult logical point in the puzzle, if you're interested in solving it quickly, it's definitely quicker to switch to pencil. Um, it's actually quite difficult to do that on the computer, but if you are in an actual competition situation, obviously you can switch to pencil and erase it very quickly um, and try it that way. So let me explain what we're talking about here. And I'd actually, I'd welcome comments. Um, we have a number of very high profile Sudoku competitors uh, who, who watch this series. Um, we've got at least one uh, multiple UK Sudoku champion and we've got several people who regularly regularly compete in the World Sudoku Championship. Um, and maybe I'm missing a trick as to, you know, maybe there is a simpler logical method that, um, that could help when we get to the relevant point. But without further ado, let's just try and fill in some of this. So um, here, yeah, there's nothing particularly clever about any of that. Um, and as, as people know, we, we, we're quite big fans here of the Tom Snyder, we call it the Tom Snyder method of, um, of solving these, where you can see that when a, a, a number can only appear in one cell or two cells in a three by three box, then we're allowed to notate it. So you can see that's exactly what I've filled in here. Um, that's the only notation uh, that I'm I'm going to allow myself, just as a discipline. Um, it does miss some things. I mean, it's certainly true to say that there are some occasions where the the most, um, I suppose, widely used alternative method would be that when you have limited a particular cell to just one of two numbers, you would write those two numbers in a cell, um, and that. You know that's used by some very good solvers too, um, but I don't know. I think I think it's um, both Mark and I think this method is it's, it's certainly not bad, and um, you know it, it gets you there. Or it it, get, it, it it captures a lot of information that's useful, and it also on these puzzles of about this level. It can allow some very, very speedy solving um, because once you get, uh, you know, once you find the break in the puzzle, you've, you've recorded this internal logic in such a way that it can often chain, and you can find a number of numbers very, very quickly um, uh, once you get that breakthrough. Uh, so you can see here I'm talking too much and not actually solving. So let's get back to that. Uh, So here, for example, I wouldn't be allowed to write two in these three cells because that's three cells within the three by three box, um, which is a bit annoying in this case. I quite like to remember that because it's a, uh, a reasonably useful thing. And in fact, I don't have to though because I can put the five in here, and that means this has to be a two, which is helpful. So I'm sort of plodding through it at the moment, not with any great alacrity, but um, what I'm trying to do is get to the point that um, we got to earlier, just to show you uh, 
You know, in fact, here you can see 9 can't go in either of these cells, so this has to be a 9. just briefly as a comment that obviously if you were using a different sort of notation here you could write down four five in each of these cells because they can only be the numbers four and five but the method that we're using doesn't actually allow us to do that so we don't capture that information if we were solving in a competition um, on paper then I mean both Mark and I I know have have ways of recording this outside of this um, this notation we're using, so I tend to write a little 4 or 5 on the boundaries of the, of the cells. Um, you know, and, and other solvers will have their own methods for doing that too, I suspect. Um, but, but when we only have, when we're solving on the computer and we only have uh, a limited uh, array of notes that we can use, um, we're just going to stick with, with this method. see that 8 is actually sort of a hidden single here. It can only go in this cell in column 9. And write that in. And this is an example of why this logic is good, because that allows us to fill this 8 and this 4 straight away. Um, and this 4. Seeing much more at this point. Let's just double check. Yeah, we can do a bit more with the twos actually. Um, this has to be a two and a two. That means this has to be a two. That means this has to be nine. This. Two cells. And this has to be six in one of these two cells. And five has to come across here like this. This has to be five here. And put the nine in one of these two cells. we can go much further now. So there's a few things that one could note here um, to try and make progress um, logically. I mean these two cells obviously are a choice of just four and five. These two cells have to be one and nine. And indeed this cell has to be one and nine. Now that means this can only be a five or a six and this can only be a five or a six. And normally that would be enough to crack a super fiendish puzzle. That, that sort of logical thing would tend to give you something to bite on in terms of enough information to make progress. But uh, here I'm not sure that that is the case. Um, I may be wrong, um, but uh, when I looked at it earlier I couldn't see a way of using that, that spot, if you like, that this is 1-9, this is 1-9, therefore this is 5-6, and this is 5-6, to make further progress. So my contention is, and I'll explain why in a minute, that the most um, 
Well, the way to reduce the standard deviation, if you like, in terms of the amount of time taken to solve from this point is very likely to be to guess probably one of these as a uh, as an answer. And, there, and the, the reason I picked these two numbers is if you look, you're immediately going to get other numbers from this guess because the fours here are pivoted in this way and both of them touch another digit as well. So if this is a four, this will be a four and this will be a two. So you get three numbers for the price of one number, or four numbers if you include this one for the price of one number and vice versa. Um, and it's very likely that just by guessing and however you do that, whether you switch to pencil or whatever, you'll force the puzzle out that way and it'll probably take one or two minutes longer to finish but you'll get it out. Now your alternative is to try and spot I think what I'm about to show you now and you can judge for yourselves whether this would be quicker or slower um, and as I say it may be because I've missed a simple step uh, and I would welcome uh, comments if, if I have but if not, I think you probably will all agree that actually guessing at a point like this is the most efficient way. Well, the first part of what you'd need to spot, I think, is that a 9 can only appear in this 3x3 three three box in one of these two positions. Uh, and I say that because if we look at column 6 here, you can see that this position can't take a 9 because of this. And this position can't take a 9 because of this. And if you go down here, this position can't take a 9 because of this. So actually, using our notation, we would be allowed to notate these two 9s. But note how hard that is to spot. You can't get that just by, you know, working through the numbers and the logic. You have to notice that 9 is checking these three squares in order to be able to write that in. Uh, but that's not enough to, to get you there. Um, so so this, this fact means that in both of these two rows, um, a 9 couldn't, for example, appear in this square. So let's la ask ourselves what this square could contain, uh, given the options that are available. So you can see, if we just look at the column numbers, we have to fit in 1, 5, 6, and 9. Okay. Now, we have a 5 here already, so this can only actually now be 1 or 6. It can't be a 9 because we've worked out that the 9s are in this sort of X-wing shape here. So this can only be a 1 or a 6. I'm not allowed to notate that in my method, but let's remember, this can only be a 1 or a 6. Now let's ask ourselves the same question about this cell here. Um, so again, if we just look up, look up the column, we can see we have 1, 2, 5, 6, 9. Well, 2 and a 5 are already in here. So 1, 6, 9 again. Well, the 9, we know it can't be a 9 because we already know that the 9 is either here or here in this row. So this is also 1, 6. So this is 1, 6 and this is 1, 6. And if you make that deduction, you're able to scan across and you know this cannot be a 6 um, because the 6 is either going to be here or here so this is going to be a 4 and ironically you then get to the point you'd have got to had you guessed one of these numbers earlier so this being a 4, this will force this to be a 4, this, this a 5 uh, and this will be a 6 etc and the puzzle will fall um, but working out, I'll fill in the numbers now just to show you what I mean. This has to be a 1, 6, and this has to be a 1, 6, and therefore this cannot be a 6. Is, I think, um, very, very difficult to do and extremely difficult to do quickly. Um, you can get it, you know, and I did by studying the grid for some minutes, um, but it's. Uh, uh, it didn't feel efficient, it felt frustrating, and in a competition situation, I knew I would be losing time to people who guessed. So, um, that's my uh, my contention for today, um, controversial as it might be, that uh, at the highest level, um, if you want to be really, really fast at speed sol solving Sudoku, get good at guessing. That's all for today. <laughs>